Welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar on the Cal on California Information Sharing Web Tool, addressing your HIPAA and FERPA questions. Thank you for joining us during um, your lunch hour this afternoon. So during this webinar, our focus will be on demonstrating how to use our new web tool to find answers to questions that you might have on HIPAA, FERPA, and California laws. We pulled some questions from those that were submitted when you registered, and we'll be using some of those to highlight sections of the web tool. We have a couple of hundred people on the webinar today, and you're all muted, and this session is being recorded. If you have any questions or feedback on the web tool, we invite you to share those on the chat as well. So our goals for the webinar are to gain an understanding of the importance and value of education and health cross-sector information sharing, and also to learn about the new web tool called a guide for information um, for sharing student health and education information, which is found on the California School-Based Health Alliance's website. And we'll also be learning how to use the web tool to address specific HIPAA and FERPA questions that you might have. So this webinar is a partnership from the Regional Educational Laboratory West funded by the Institute of Education Sciences and RHEL West conducts research and provides technical support around data and research. Our second agency represented is the California School-Based Health Alliance, a statewide nonprofit organization whose mission is to improve the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in California, and the National Center for Youth Law, a law firm that works across multiple public systems serving children, including education, child welfare, public health, and juvenile justice. So my name is Rebecca Serna from Well West at West Ed, and our two other presenters are Rebecca Gudeman from the National Center of Youth Law and Marcel Reynolds from the Communications Director from the California School-Based Health Alliance. So now I'm going to pass it to Rebecca Gudeman so that she can provide some grounding on the importance of why student health information sharing and privacy are critical to our work. Rebecca. Thanks so much, Rebecca, um, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to start by just setting the scene with a case study. So our study is John. He's in third grade at Franklin Elementary School. He's been distracted and fidgeting in class. His teacher refers him and his family to the mental health counselor from a local nonprofit who comes to campus once a week. The counselor learns that John's aunt recently passed away and that he's scared about losing other family members. He hasn't been sleeping well and is feeling anxious. John's teacher reaches out to the counselor to ask if there's anything she can do to help him. So um, next slide, please. Um, I just want everyone to take a second and think about John's story. If you were the teacher or school administration, how might sharing information with or getting information from John's counselor help you meet John's educational needs? And feel free to type any thoughts you might have on this into the uh, chat box. So how might it be helpful for the um, teacher or school administration to either get information from the school counselor or uh, to uh, share information. Um, and at, while you're thinking about that, if you were the counselor, um, think about what information might be helpful um, to, for you to get from the school. Just imagine how sharing information might help in this case. Um, so again, feel free to type a few thoughts into the chat if you want. Um, so yeah, someone mentioned what other supports or services are being provided so we can get a full picture of John's story. Um, yeah, to provide additional support services. Um, you know, I think this is a great example uh, that shows the real power of bringing um, education and health to uh, to the uh, school campus. Um, in John's case, the counselor was um, able to get an early referral from the teacher because the teacher is on the ground seeing him every day, um, can get some really great feedback about the changes she's witnessed, um, the real subtle stuff that she's been able to see that might otherwise have taken a while to identify um, and his emotional processing and behavior. Um, this counselor can share with the school ways to support John and wrap around his family in concrete, as you all noted, um, uh, 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 
combination of supportive services. Um, in general, we know that information sharing can lead to earlier intervention, ensure warm handoffs between providers, and improve coordination, and that ultimately leads to better outcomes, both health outcomes and education outcomes. Um, overall, school-based health programs and providers can bring a range of needed healthcare to a school campus um, and really provide an exciting opportunity to improve outcomes all around in a unique way and, and leverage um, the best of both programs. Um, next slide, please. Um, but there's a reason we don't allow for freeform sharing of information, even in such powerful collaborative venues. Privacy is also important. We literally have hundreds of years of informal and formal research that tell us that privacy is important to encourage people to seek needed care, um, to encourage them to feel safe, disclosing about their true needs when they're in a doctor's office, particularly around more sensitive issues, issues related to mental health, to family function. Um, you may get someone in a room, but if you won't find out what's really going on with them without providing some assurances around confidentiality. This is true for adults, this is true for families, and this is true even for children, particularly for adolescents. Um, thank you, I see some really great stuff coming through the chat. Thank you, please continue to add to it. Um, you know, we know for adolescents, um, a lot of teens are striving for individuation and autonomy. And there is research saying that youth who forego care, who simply refuse to seek care, name the lack of confidentiality as the most significant reason. Um, and it's, it's because of this crucial role of privacy that we have laws and ethical rules creating privacy protections and limiting disclosures um, in, in both the education and health um, sectors, because we know this will improve outcomes. Next slide, please. Now, luckily the laws in place are not absolute. They do allow for some sharing of information. They just create some boundaries, some parameters about what can be shared when and with whom. So for example, under almost every confidentiality law, information can always be shared with a signed release of information. And under almost every confidentiality law, information um, must be shared under uh, certain exceptions. For example, if a court order requires a release or for mandated reporting of child abuse, um, those are exceptions to confidentiality laws. Um, similarly, under almost every confidentiality law, there are what we call discretionary disclosures. These are situations in which the law creates space for us to share information and allows a provider or a school to share, but doesn't require it. So those are the really interesting um, tools we have to work with when we're trying to create a balanced information sharing um, program at a school site. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so particularly when we're thinking about those discretionary spaces in the law, what happens when those kick in? Um, this webinar is about HIPAA and FERPA, the laws. And as I said, the laws set parameters, but it's critical to recognize and elevate that the law isn't the only thing that matters here. As I stated before, the laws are designed to create opportunities for sharing, um, and they have exceptions that allow but don't require sharing. Um, and it's in those spaces that whether information does get shared or doesn't can depend on the factors you see listed on this slide. So what do I mean by that? Um, let's take one example. Under HIPAA, there's an exception that allows one healthcare provider to share information with another healthcare provider about a client they have in common for purposes of referral or coordination. So in Johnny's case, the case we started with, let's say the counselor he's seen at the school whose records are subject to HIPAA, um, that counselor would be able to make a referral to an outside health agency and share information about Johnny and his family without having to get a sound, signed release, without having to get permission. The law allows that. But just because the counselor has the space to do that under HIPAA doesn't mean the counselor always will. Why not? Well, some clinics may have an explicit policy that they want all their clinicians to request sign releases 
um, even if it's not required legally. They might require that for ethical reasons or licensing reasons, or because they believe this is gonna foster patient trust, trust in their profession, trust in the relationship and make that space where Johnny feels safe disclosing. Um, and those are all really important and valid reasons. So again, while we're talking about the law today, um, the law is sometimes providing parameters for what's allowed. Um, but when you're talking about putting policies and protocols and forms in place on the ground about information sharing policies and practice, it's important to look at all the partners at the table, look at the communities you're serving, um, and honor and acknowledge that all of these other variables on the slide um, come into play. And the best practice policies for information sharing at your site may end up looking very different than the policies and practices at the agency or the school down the street. And that's okay because maybe you um, are dealing with different community norms, different services, um, different partners, et cetera. Next slide, please. So what does this mean for HIPAA and FERPA? Let's just do a real basic uh, run through. HIPAA is a law designed to protect the confidentiality of health information created by what are called covered entities. FERPA is a law designed to protect the privacy of education records created by certain public um, uh, education agencies. Both allow sharing of information with a signed consent to release form. Both allow sharing without need of release in some cases. Sometimes it's mandatory, sometimes it's discretionary. Um, when services are being provided in a school setting, there are a lot of questions about which of these two laws apply. There could be questions about, is it HIPAA, is it FERPA? Um, who's allowed to share with whom? Uh, if I'm getting a release form, what does it look like? Um, these, we created at the National Center for Youth Law, my organization, um, something called the HIPAA FERPA Primer, trying to respond to some of these questions. The Primer is sort of a baseline, but it's a dense book. Um, and we, as many of you know, have been doing webinars in partnership with um, my great colleagues here over and over. But the truth is, this stuff is complicated. And no matter how many times you see the webinar, um, you may not know what question is going to come up until it comes up. And then you want to have a, a, a real easy way to find answers to your questions. Um, and that's what we're here to talk about, a new way to answer your questions. So I'm going to hand it back to the other Rebecca right now to talk about our new web tool. Hey, thank you, Rebecca. So our next you know, focus is to provide you to this introduction to this new resource. So we organized a California information sharing work group that included partners from the California School Based Health Alliance, the National Center for Youth Law, REL West at West Ed. And we also had the support from partners at the Alameda County Healthcare Services Agency, Breaking Barriers, Native American Health, and the Los Angeles Trust for Children's Health. And it was a four year process to develop this web tool to where we are today. It started with exploring what already existed and the needs that were the needs that existed in the field as well. And we formed this work group and participated in various um, sessions to gather input from the field and we worked on co-designing and developing the web tool and on creating an interface that would ideally make it easier for you, the field, to find your HIPAA and FERPA um, answers um, that you might have to your questions. Um, so as Rebecca mentioned, part of our process was to update this foundational resource. Um, so Rebecca created the second edition to the primer that is a valuable resource you know, to the field in California. And the web tool is based on the content from this primer. So now I'm gonna um, pass it to Marcel, who's gonna be guiding us through an overview of the content and the format of the tool. And we will also be posting the link to the web tool in the chat for you as well. Thank you, Rebecca. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marcel Reynolds. I'm the Communications Director at the California School-Based Health Alliance, and I am going to be giving you a tour of the online guide. Um, and then we're going to be asking some specific questions, and I will be demonstrating um, for you like how to find these um, answers to some of these questions in the guide. So I'm going to share my screen, and I am currently on www 
www.schoolhealthcenters.org. And that's the California School-Based Health Alliance website. And there are two ways that you can get to the online guide. And the easiest way for you to go is to go down to this bronze wrench right here, the HIPAA FERPA guide, and click on this orange, um, orange button and you'll get straight into the online guide. However, I do want to quickly walk you um, through another way to get to it. And because we have a lot of resources on our website, so another way, if you want to take like a broader overview, you could go into resources, SBHC operations, and that's school-based health center operations. And then if you click on consent and confidentiality, you will end up on this page. And this is kind of stepping back um, because if you're coming with a lot of questions in your mind, you're not really sure, is it HIPAA, FERPA, or something else, you can come to this, this page and it's got some sample questions that kind of focus on whether something is services or if it's related to information sharing. So you have some of these sample questions like, may a 15 year old get counseling services without a parent or guardian's consent? And this is all what we're talking about is all the state of California. So if you say, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking, I, I think that that applies to me. You would click on this button and you would go into our consent section. And this is, um, this is just around minor consent and around consent to services. And we are gonna be adding to this section later this year. So this section is going to be kind of um, having a little revamp, but there's a lot of information here. So don't overlook this section. And depending on where you are in your process of asking questions about um, you know, services that you're providing, this may be where you wanna go. So I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna show, you know, there's some sample questions around uh, information sharing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so, you know, may a school-based health provider share information with the school nurse? You know, if some of these questions look like the questions that you're asking that you have, then you would go into confidentiality. And that is the other way to get into the web tool. So either from the homepage, if you know exactly, or if you're really wondering, you could go resources, SBHC operations, and then you could go in this way and see some of those questions. So, this is the landing page of our California guide. And I'm just gonna walk through the sections rather quickly, and then we're gonna get into some of those specific questions. And I wanna point out that almost all the pages, they have these brief videos. So this is a minute, 59 seconds. So these are really helpful because um, that primer that um, Rebecca Goodman and Rebecca Serna um, that they discussed before I started sharing this, that is so dense. There's so much information and that's where a lot of this information um, is based upon and that's the foundation of this guide. And so these videos are really helpful if you just wanna get an overview and not have to read and pour through a lot of copy. Um, and so take advantage of these videos, they're really great. So there's a short video, an intro video that kind of gets into some of what um, Rebecca Goodman was talking about um, just now. And then there are these sections here. So I also want to point out we have this navigation bar on the side. So all the sections are here, but you can also click through to them here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into key points. And this kind of is our first section. Um, and it gives an introduction. It gives some basics such as FERPA and HIPAA can never apply to the same records at the same time. So some of that helpful information that you may be having and wondering, some of the answers are right here. And the other thing that's really great um, about this is the flowchart. So this is a very, very helpful resource. So if you click on this, download a flowchart, this is something where you can find answers to many questions that you may have right away on this flowchart because it kind of gets into what kind of provider, who employs the provider, what services are they providing, and then which law applies to them. And, and, and so the flowchart is very helpful. And again, there's a how HIP and FERPA interact with some sample, um, sample scenarios. And so that's our overview page key points. And then there are sections on HIPAA and FERPA basics. So if you know already, well, um, my questions about HIPAA, you can get some basics answered here. Again, a short video, this is less than 10 minutes and you can see, um, you know, what is HIPAA? What does it govern or, you know, what, what, what does it cover? 
And then there's lots of these buttons and you can find answers. These are all questions and then answers. So it's just kind of each section has this type of FAQ where you can see um, you know, more detail about some of these questions that are posed. And then if you go to FERPA basics, again, there's a video um, overview, less than 10 minutes, an overview of FERPA. Um, you know, what does it mean in California? How does it apply to services that are provided to students? And there are again, many, many, many questions here and answers um, and, and some sample scenarios um, that, that apply. And then if you go to frequently asked questions, this is the section after I finish this overview, we're gonna kind of go more in depth here. But this section, if you, um, the way that this guide was structured was really around the roles that many of you play. Um, you know, if you're a school nurse, if you're a medical provider or a student, if you're the person seeking services. And this is where you can find answers to more specific questions that relate to those roles to either, you know, who, who you are or the services that, um, you know, somebody, maybe a colleague of yours is providing. So we're going to go through each of those and kind of um, look around in each of those FAQs, but you can click on them um, in the FAQ section and you can see what kinds of questions, you know, how does HIPAA and FERPA interact with the medical provider? Or how does a medical provider interact with HIPAA and FERPA? And, you know, what are some of those things? So there are lots of different specific questions. There's questions around minor consent, sharing and disclosure. So the FAQ is where you will find these different roles. And again, you can navigate through the different roles over here on the sidebar too. And additional resources. So our additional resources, um, there are lots, this is recently updated. There are lots of sample forms um, that are very helpful that you can download. And one of the best parts about additional resources is this is where the HIPAA FERPA 101 training lives. So uh, Rebecca Gudeman gave this to school-based health providers um, in, you know, recently in the last year. And there's a recording of like a really specific webinar in HIPAA FERPA um, that kind of gets into, you know, how this relates to school-based health services. So you can watch that and that's, you know, an hour long training. And then there are lots of downloadable, downloadable resources, the flowchart again, you'll find the flowchart in various places, a glossary of key terms, there's FERPA web resources, HIPAA web resources, federal and state codes, and many other resources. So it's really a goldmine um, of information um, that you can, this is kind of a library, a one-stop shop really for a lot of um, questions that you might have that, that can lead you to the specific answers that you may be looking for. Um, second to last is background. This kind of talks more about, you know, what is the foundation um, for a lot of the information that is shared in this online guide. And that's the primer that was mentioned and you can download the print primer from this page. And the primer has, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty on all of this. And then finally, the last section is, are the end notes. And the end notes are really kind of the legal details. And this is really useful if you do have a really specific question and maybe you're not finding answers here and you're going to consult with legal services and this can help, you know, this has a lot of information that your legal team could pour through and possibly find. Um, and a lot of it is kind of the documentation that, you know, um, describes um, all of these codes and, and laws. So that is, um, that is our online guide in a nutshell. That's, uh, it's, it's a lot, but it's not too much. And now um, we're going to look at some really specific questions um, that, and, and then we'll navigate through the guide to see how to find the answers. Great, thank you. Thank you, Marcel. That was a helpful overview. Um, so now what we are going to do is we received several questions from you when you registered. Um, I also see some additional questions being asked in the chat. But what we did is we took some of the questions that were submitted um, and also some that we frequently receive from the field to kind of demonstrate how to navigate the web tool to find um, your answers. So here's one question that was submitted by a couple of webinar attendees. It's one that's also often asked, am I HIPAA or am I FERPA? Um, Marcel, I know that 
you already shared a lot of good information in the web tool regarding this. So can you guide us to where we might start to find the answer to this question? Yes. So I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna go, I'm back in the landing page of the guide. And really, I think the best way to find the answer to this question is that flowchart. So you could go to key points and you could go down to the flowchart for decision making. And this has, and it's actually already open, I'm gonna show it here. Um, it has some of the, um, some of the scenarios that kind of talk about um, what is the role, who is the employer, you know, how are the services being provided? And that just dis discusses like, and then you can see it, it'll say FERPA applies, HIPAA applies, or neither. Um, and so this is really the best resource to find the answer to that question. And then also this um, key points introduction, because it has, you know, it says FERPA or HIPAA here, and there's some more information there. And Rebecca, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll just throw in a quick comment. Um, you know, a lot of folks want there to just be one answer to this. And the problem is that um, the question is specific to your individual situation. It depends on certain variables, your funding source, administrative control of services, and the type of services you provide. That's why we had to do the flow chart. Um, sometimes the answer is really clear cut. So for example, if you're a school nurse, you're employed by a public school district, you're serving a traditional school nurse role, um, and <clears throat> the services you provide are traditional school nurse services, um, that means all those variables align and the records that you create are subject to FERPA. But as we move more and more into creative merging of services on school sites, it isn't always so clear cut. And Stuart provided an example actually in the chart where, uh, sorry, in the chat, um, where you might have a behavioral health care agency that is a covered entity under HIPAA that is mostly providing funding for its services, but also getting some funding from the school. Um, that those are the situations where, unfortunately, you probably need to go back to your own legal counsel to do an analysis, looking at all three variables, which way do they um, tilt? It's not going to be black and white. You have to sort of look at the balance of them all. So, Stuart, that's the kind of question where we would refer you back to your legal counsel. And unfortunately, that's sometimes going to be our best answer. This web, this web tool can give you the parameters. It can give you the um, variables, but some of these are going to still end up having to go back to your uh, legal counsel. Okay, great, thank you. So here's another question. So this question was submitted from a school nurse. Can you operate under HIPAA and FERPA at the same time? So Marcel, where uh, might we find some information for this question? Sure, so I'm sharing my screen again. And if I go up, um, if I go up to um, the main page, and I, you could either go and click on the school nurse icon, or you could go to the FAQs. But I think the easiest thing, um, first of all, um, you know, we kind of talked about this. You can't be both, and that's in the flow chart too. So if you go to the flow chart, you can see that. But if you go to the school nurse, um, you can see some of the answers, am I HIPAA or FERPA? Um, you can see kind of, it you know, it depends. And there's a detailed explanation of why that is um, under the school nurse icon. Um, Rebecca, is there anything to add with this one? Uh, nope, I think you'll see in multiple places on the website, the guide that says you can, you're only one or the other, you can't be both. and. And I'll just add legalese and say that that comes directly from HIPAA. FERPA ex sorry, HIPAA explicitly states that if information is subject to FERPA, then HIPAA does not apply. So you're under one, your records are under one or the other, but never both. Okay, great. So here we're on to the next question. Um, so this came from a school administrator. It's a two-part question. So we recently brought in a community-based mental health clinic operating under HIPAA to provide services on campus. 
what do we need to do to make referrals and what information can we share? So Marcel, where could be one place where we could start looking for this answer? So if I go back to the tool, um, let's go to our frequently asked questions section. And it seems to be asking what information can be shared. Um, so you might be able to find information under the school administrator avatar for that um, around um, sharing the sharing of information. Um, but you could, um, the second question is about referrals. Um, and to make a referral, you're getting information that is in a school file and school records are subject to FERPA. And you might be able to find the answer to that question under the behavioral provider section of the frequently asked questions. Um, and so you can see if I'm a behavioral health provider working in a school where, you know, what, uh, what law, um, um, you know, uh, are my records subject to, um, and you can find more information there. Um, Rebecca, what would you, would you add anything to that? Um, I, I think I would just say I like this question because um, it, what it highlights is you may have questions where you don't find the exact wording of your question in this list. And so taking that step back, like you just did, Marcel, and basically just saying to yourself sort of the who, what, why, where, when, who um, is being asked to share information, why are they being asked to share information, from what source, and if you step back and sort of think through it that way, you can come into the, you can sort of reshape your question and you probably will find an answer, um, but you may need to sort of do that stepping back um, to sort of think about, wait, what am I really asking? I'm, I'm talking about sharing from a record subject to FERPA. What is, you know, is it, the, is it the student's schedule? Is it the student's medical information? Is it just their name? Um, and once you think through that, you will probably be able to find your answer on the website, hopefully. Okay, great, thank you. So next we have a question that we often get from, you know, from youth. So youth often have questions about services on campus. Um, they could be about services that they can access on their own or about privacy of their own information. Um, so here's a recent question received from a youth. Um, a children's hospital has opened a clinic at my school. If I go and sign a minor consent form for services, will information be shared with my teachers? Marcel, where might you take us here? So I think the clearest way to get this information is to go. Um, so I'm going back, I'm gonna go back up to the top. Um, I think you could go to the student icon to find um, questions and I'll also show FAQs. It's also, um, you can get to these icons in both ways. So if we click the student, um, I think that this has some places where you can find information around, you know, what applies um, regarding the services, um, you know, what applies to you. Um, Rebecca, what do you think? Is that is that the best way to go about it? Um, yeah, when I so in looking at any question that has to do, you know, when you say minor consent, I think it's always, as you were saying, Marcel, really important to make sure we're all on the same page. Are we asking about consent to treatment, someone's entry into services, and therefore you would go back to sort of that consent confidentiality page. Um, or are we asking about what happens with the information once somebody receives um, services? Um, and if it's about that, which this question is, I would go exactly where you said, Marcel. And the one thing I would just highlight too for this, this is a great example of the kind of um, space where the law provides parameters. And then it's, we have sometimes have spaces to create best practices around information sharing. Um, and it can be really important um, and powerful to make sure before we provide services that we all understand what those confidentiality parameters are, because um, if we can inform clients and students ahead of time, it gives them um, the, the power to make some decisions about um, where they seek care and what they feel comfortable disclosing. And it will really further that relationship that we're forging with that young person. So ha having these answers before a question comes up can be really, um, really, really important.
So I'm gonna, thanks Rebecca, I'm gonna pass it back to Marcel. So thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, so I just wanna highlight, um, and I mentioned it when I kind of went through the overview of the tool, but there are several videos, which these are so helpful because there's so much content. The guide is so, um, you know, so rich with so much information. These videos I think are really helpful for kind of giving you that overview, helping you think about how to frame, um, you know, your search. Um, and so those videos, um, they are an overview um, of the whole guide. There's an overview of HIPAA, an overview of FERPA. There's an overview of how they interact. And finally, there is the HIPAA FERPA 101 um, guide. And I can go back through the tool, um, Rebecca, and show, um, you, you know, show um, where to find those again, um, if that's helpful. So let me just share my screen. And again, I'm going to start from the top. If you go to our website, the best way to get into the online guide is click down here. And you will be in the online guide. And the first video is this overall video. It's a less than two minutes. It's really easy. We have some students who serve on our youth board. They introduce, you know, from a student's perspective, why all of this matters, right? And they go through the video. And then there are, there is, um, we have um, a video of how HIPAA and FERPA interact under key points. If you go to HIPAA basics, there is a, a more detailed video, but still less than 10 minutes. So, um, you know, easy to watch and quickly get information, on, an overview of HIPAA. Under FERPA basics, there is up top, less than 10 minutes, an overview of FERPA. And then um, under the additional resources, we have this, um, you know, amazing video, which is a training that Rebecca did for school based health providers that gets into HIPAA FERPA 101 that really dives a little deeper, gets into, you know, the principles, et cetera, how things apply, goes through some scenarios, and that's about an hour long, and that's from a training that she did um, recently. And so you can find all those videos in these sections. And finally, I just wanted to, um, this is the email information. If you have questions about the tool, if there are things that, um, you know, if there's a broken link or if there, you know, you're really having trouble finding information, you can email us at info at schoolhealthcenters.org. And that will be um, directed to, um, to staff and we can help you. And, Again, we can't um, maybe answer really specific questions you have that are you know, legal questions that are very, very specific to a certain case that you might be dealing with um, or a certain scenario. But if you're looking for information, if you wanna know more broadly, we can point you to the right place. Um, and then if you have any other questions around um, you know, the other information, the information on consent, um, and, you know, or anything, if the forms or if for some reason, maybe, you know, your school district website blocks some of the content, um, just email us and let us know about it. Great. Thank you, Marcel. And here we are, you know, at the end, and we um, would really value your feedback. Um, it's very important to us. We ask if you are able to take a quick two minutes of your time um, to answer the survey. The link um, should be posted in the chat. And survey results will be provided to the US Department of Ed. Um, and this is just to provide feedback so that we're able to, um, so that they're able to provide funding for free tools and resources to the field like this web tool. So again, we'd like to thank you for joining us um, today. And we hope that you find this web tool helpful to answer some of your HIPAA and FERPA questions in California. And tomorrow, um, Marcel would be, will be sending an email with a recording of this webinar to everyone who, who registered as well. Thank you so much.